Hello, my name is Albert Franco, and I'm a history major and senior at Cal State University Fullerton. And I'm here to talk to you about the experiences of our disabled students through our K through 12 system, specifically the accessibility, quality, and experiences these students have faced. Uh, for my research, I've narrowed down the narrative to the experiences of an autistic child named Christian. Uh, through the eyes and words of his parents, Leo Alvarez and Maria Gomez, uh, we can see an overall positive experience with our education system and the benefits of the IDEA Act or Individuals with Disabilities Act, so which had its roots here in the United States since the 1970s. So without further delay, let me quickly introduce Leo Alvarez, the father of Christian. Um, uh, if you can, introduce yourself. And, uh, your, and, uh... My name is Leo Alvarez. I'm living here in California. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, and I... Uh, can you quickly say, uh, like, where are your, your roots, uh, where were you born, and... I was born in uh, Colombia, and um, my roots, you know, my grandparents are from Colombia. Okay. And I uh, okay. came out here a long time ago, 30 years ago. 30 years ago? Oh, that was my next question. When did you immigrate? <laughs> okay. <30 years> <laughs> 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 my next question. Which is good. Oh, good timing. All right. Okay. Fair. And uh, what is your career and profession? I'm an electrical engineer. Electrical engineer? Mm. Yeah. So that is Leo Alvarez. He is an immigrant from Colombia and a proud father of a normal daughter and Christian who is autistic and attends a local high school here in Hemet. Now here is his wonderful wife, Maria Gomez. And where were you born? I'm Hispanic mm -hmm. and I was born in Norwalk, California. Oh, nearby. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, and uh, so your grandparents uh, immigrated and they... Uh, where did they immigrate from? Um, they, from what I understand, um, they were um, from Mexico. Okay. Yeah. And you're, so you'd be second generation? Yeah. Oh, okay. So now that you have a better idea of who these wonderful parents are, now we will see the experiences they have had with the high school district and teachers in regards to their son's educational needs. And if the special needs system in our education has to be reimagined or modified for Christian, uh, you know, K through twelve. Um, I will. I would say some somewhat happy, somewhat um, not too happy. Oh, really? And uh, especially with my son, because I um, um, I have had to push the school system to get the services. Um, that my son needs in order to, you know, provide, um, you know, his good, this is good education. He, uh, yeah, to um, make make sure you know uh, they provide what they need for his needs. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the school system was pretty hesitant, or like gave him like a very kind of a generic, um, mm -hmm. like cookie cutter, like school program to get him through. It, yeah, yeah, um, like. Um, for example, he, he needs, um, he has had to have um, adapted PE, uh -huh. not just regular PE. Oh, really? Um, so I have had to request for that. Um, there has been uh, services that, that unless I request, they don't, you know, they don't offer. Off they, 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 they don't offer um, I find out through other parents oh, really? what's out there for them that, for them that I can request for his benefit, and unless they bring right. it up in it's his meetings, it won't happen. Right. Yeah. Miss Miss, uh, what's his name? Miss Thompson. We got an issue with Miss Thompson. Uh, he was marginalized from her, mm. and uh, at some point, you know, her his reaction, perhaps I don't know, but this is only. This is for, you know, whatever they told us in the school or whatever. Perhaps he, 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 actually, he did it. Hit her. Hit and she, yeah, yeah, Christian hit her. I don't know how. Slap her, kick her. Don't know. Yeah. But whatever it happened, perhaps she didn't like it. And she tried to manage him and she did a lot. And they also have, instead of just having one teacher, they have the teacher... Plus, um, like they, 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 they only have like a, a class of maybe 11 kids mm -hmm. 
or maybe at the most 14, 15 kids, but there's uh, the teacher and assistants. Okay. Um, like maybe um, two to one or three to one, or one, like in, in my case, in my son's case, uh, he has a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, okay. Yeah. And because, I, I imagine these aides are like trained in whatever. Uh, oh, yeah. Is, yeah, they uh, send them. As mentioned, Christian was first integrated into the mainstream courses, but ran into problems with teachers. While scholarly works such as Beth A. Fair's Doing a Disservice, Reimagining Special Education from a Disability Studies Perspective, and the New York Times article for some special ed students, Inclusion is Deferred, infer that the higher levels of inclusion as a solution for disabled students. It may not be a sweeping answer for students like Christian that can be aggressive or need much more individual attention. It is important to note that Christian is included socially in his high school. He eats lunch with his peers and goes to functions like sports games and prom like the rest of his classmates. I was expecting to hear a story at first of greater inclusion in our high schools, but found that for some cases, specifically Christians, that the status quo may be still a fine solution. If the parents are happy with their child's progress and the environment and Chris that Christian is having is positive and it's a productive learning environment with these teachers, that are, you know, trained for his special needs, I could not find an issue with the exclusion-inclusion hybrid in his education. Like the saying goes, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. So this is Albert Franco. Goodbye, and I wish you the best.